This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, we all know that auto theft and auto hacking have been a huge topic in the media recently. These are gaining access to vehicles with all new, technically advanced ways. Now, the idea of hacking cars with technology isn't a new thing whatsoever. In fact, the giant hacker convention DEF CON has had a car hacking village for years now. The Flipper Zero has been getting a bad rap from press because people thought that this thing actually could hack cars. It was basically all misinformation or misunderstanding about how a Flipper Zero actually works. Now, this little thing can actually read things like car keys and fobs. However, there is security in place that makes it so that even though it can read it, it really can't do much with it. This thing straight out of the box is probably not going to be able to hack your car. Now, with some clever engineering and some technical know-how, maybe it can. If we can use the Flipper Zero to actually get into the computer of the car, then we have a lot more options. Recently, a researcher named Matthew Kukinich was actually able to connect his Flipper Zero to his car using a CAN bus module. And if you know anything about CAN bus, once you're in, you're in. So sit back and relax, grab a snack, and we're going to explore the wonderful world of CAN bus. Let's go! First of all, a huge shout out to Matthew Kukinich. He created an amazing presentation that this entire video is based on, basically outlining the entire process of CAN bus reverse engineering. Matthew is a CAN bus and vehicle integration specialist, and he spent over eight months creating this presentation. So if you're interested at all after watching this video, link down below, watch the entire presentation. It's fantastic. So I guess first question, what is CAN bus? Now CAN stands for controller area network and bus stands for binary unit system. Consider it your car's nervous system. It's an extremely good and robust two wire system for transmitting data. What's good about it is it allows basically a two wire system to run throughout the car that all of the different sensors and devices can connect to without having to connect directly to the computer. Imagine if every single sensor and light in every part of your car that had electronics in it had to be connected directly to the computer with a wire. Your car would basically just be one huge mass of wire. So that's where CAN bus comes in. Every single one of these devices hooks up to the CAN bus system and then the CAN bus connects to the computer. What's also really cool is that there's two wires but it actually carries pretty much the same data between both. The cool thing about the system is that one wire carries data, the other wire carries the inverted version of that data. Since they both carry the same information only inverted, it makes a very redundant robust system. So how do we interface with the CAN bus system? Well, we can use something like an MCP2515. This little guy's got two little screw terminals, which will allow you to connect both of your CAN wires directly to the board. So then you can use something like an ODB2 pigtail to connect the board directly to the car. Then once you're in, you can use something like an Arduino Nano or a Flipper Zero to control it. Now that means we might need to create a PCB to get this done. And that brings us to today's sponsor. PCB Way. PCB Way makes it easier than ever to create all of your own custom PCBs. They will help you through absolutely every step of the process, making it easier than ever to create any gadget you might want. Pair that with industry leading 3D printing. Remember the clear case mod we did from the last video and the flexible PCB inside? That's where I got it from. They will help you through every single step of the process. It literally couldn't be easier. So head on down to PCBWay.com for a free instant quote. Thank you so much to PCBWay for your continued support. You guys are awesome. Let's get back at it. Now, the ODB2 port on your car is not the only way to access the CAN bus. Now, the ODB2 port is probably the easiest way, and it has access to multiple of the different CAN bus systems that your car has. However, there are other options. Now, remember how we said earlier that the CAN bus system acts kind of an intermediary between all your sensors and stuff and the computer of the car. So that means that anything that's directly connected to the CAN bus system creates an access point for us to attack. Well, on modern vehicles, things like the headlights and the taillights are actually connected to the CAN bus system. So in these situations, a bad actor could potentially access the CAN bus system through a light and then inject their own code into it. Now, this isn't necessarily a super easy thing to do. Now, in able to actually talk to the car through the CAN bus system, System, we need something that's called a DBC or a database container file. Basically, the database container file is like a translator so that we can take the commands that we want and make the car able to understand what we're asking it to do. Now, these database containers are proprietary and they are specific to every vehicle's make and model. So you can't just go running around plugging CAN bus into stuff all willy nilly like it's just going to work. But these translator files can be reverse engineered. If it can be done, it will be done. So you can find a whole bunch of these container files right down in Matthew K's GitHub. And actually, let's pop down to the desktop and take a look at it. 
So yeah, this is the GitHub for the Can Commander by Matthew Kukinich. So of course, while we're down here, let's give him a star. And then we can take a look in the Can resources. If we go to the DBC files right there, we can see all of these database container files. Very, very cool. And if we take a look at them, we can just kind of open one of these and we can see more or less what they look like. Now, if you're interested in what all of this means, check out Matthew K's video. He explains all of this and how he reverse engineered it from raw code. It's very, very interesting. So go check them out. So now it really just begs the question of now what could we do? Well, with a connection to the car's CAN bus system and the correct database files to act as a translator, we can pretty much do anything. Well, you can see here in this video, Matthew's actually using a homemade CAN bus interface to read the car's RPM. So once he figured out how to do that, he was able to create his own LCD speedometer and revometer. So feeling confident, he thought, hey, what's next? Maybe I can get into my car's infotainment system. So that's what he did. Now, gaining access to that system wasn't exactly the easiest thing in the world. You can actually see a picture here showing how much disassembly it took just to access that wire. But after a good while of disassembling his car, he was finally able to access it. What's cool is that after he started reading the information coming from the CAN bus, he was able to manually reverse engineer everything it was saying. Now, his screen for his infotainment system is relatively primitive. It's just an LCD, but he was able to figure out that it was saying FM2 and the radio station it was on. So now that he was able to figure out exactly how to display things on the LCD, he could do pretty much anything. So he took his work that he did earlier, figuring out the speedometer and the revometer, then he was able to put it directly onto the infotainment screen. So just with a little bit of reverse engineering, he was able to give himself a digital revometer and tachometer right on the infotainment screen. Fun trick, right? Now, obviously having a laptop connected to your car's CAN bus system is a little bit bulky and not exactly the best way to do things. Now, as we said before, you can use something like an Arduino Nano or a Flipper Zero to do it. So introducing the CAN Commander. Now, the CAN Commander was a joint effort of Matthew Kukinich and Rabbit Labs. The CAN Commander allows the Flipper Zero to interface directly with the car's CAN bus system. So now we can see a video of him using his Flipper Zero to actually put his own message on the car's infotainment screen. How cool is that? But that's not all the CAN Commander can do. See, when you put people like Matthew K and Rabbit Labs together, they're going to over-engineer the hell out of this thing. So not only does it have the CAN bus interface, but it also has a CC1101, it's got GPS, and an ESP32-S3 in it. So here's the fun part. The CC1101 is a sub-gigahertz chip that can send and receive sub-gigahertz frequencies. So that means that the CAN commander can actually read things from your key fob and then connect it directly to the CAN bus information. So not only can the CAN commander read your key sending an unlock signal, it also reads what the unlock signal does inside the car's computer. So since now we're connected directly to the computer and we know exactly what the computer's doing when you press a button on the key, it pretty much gets rid of any of the rolling code problems you'd have if you're just trying to interface with the key. So with a wired connection directly from a Flipper Zero into your CAN bus and having the ability to read what's going on with the key, pretty much the possibilities are endless. So you can see here that Matthew's actually using the Flipper Zero to read the speed and RPM of his car. Now, most of the research we've seen so far has been Matthew basically reading information from the car or sending things through the infotainment system. That being said, there's nothing stopping you from actually sending information to the car and then pretty much anything's possible. Now, we'll touch back on that just a little bit later, but I did want to show off some other really cool stuff from the CAN Commander. Now, remember, it's also got GPS and Wi-Fi, which actually allowed Matthew K to write his own application for Android and iOS. Since the CAN Commander has Wi-Fi, these apps can interface directly with it, and then you can actually use some more cool stuff. Now, using a WebSocket, the mobile app can actually directly contact the CAN Commander. And now, since you're using a cell phone, it's actually a lot easier to do things like reverse engineering code. Now, you can see in this video, Matthew's actually using his cell phone to not only control the CAN commander, but now he's reading raw code from the CAN bus system. Then he added the ability to filter this data to get rid of some of the stuff he didn't need to reverse engineer the code. So once he's reversed engineered the code and figured out how to send his own code in there, that actually opens things up to attack vectors. So one thing to understand is that the CAN bus system uses prioritized packets in order to communicate with the system. That means that the car's computer is going to read the highest priority commands first. That also means that if we can flood a whole bunch of high priority packets, the car's computer system's only going to read our packets. And if we make those packets as long as possible to make it so that the computer takes as long as possible to read them, 
That means we've created ourselves a denial of service attack. You spam a bunch of high priority large packets at the computer and that's all it can read and nothing else. So obviously on a vehicle, it's pretty much going to disable the vehicle. That's pretty fun. Now, the other thing we can do is if we place ourselves between a sensor or something and the actual vehicle, then we're the intermediary of the CAN bus. And that's what's called a man in the middle attack. Now, in a man-in-the-middle attack, basically device A thinks it's talking directly to device B, and device B thinks it's talking directly to device A. Well, that's where we come in, because we're sitting directly in the middle of those two, and they're none the wiser. Device A can try to tell device B whatever it wants, but we can decide what device B thinks it's being told from device A. So what this means is we can effectively trick the car or a sensor into believing anything we want it to. So where this gets interesting is if your vehicle has some sort of monitoring or logging system on it, we can completely change the data that that gets. For example, say you had like an insurance that has a safe driver discount. If you plug something into your car, now you can control what information that device gets. Maybe you can program in a threshold so the car never thinks it's going over the speed limit, or maybe just have it filter out a hard braking situation or something like that. Obviously, Obviously, the possibilities from here are pretty much endless. Keeping in mind that the CAN bus system is pretty much completely open, there's really no stopping anybody from doing anything once they get inside. And hackers have been getting inside. There was an article going around about a year ago, somebody was using a JBL speaker, well, the outside of one, but inside was a computer, and they made it so that if you connected it to the CAN bus system, press the button, it would unlock the doors. So obviously, not only is this a known issue, but it's also a potentially big problem. Of course, the automotive industry knows all about this, and it's up to them to figure out what they're going to do about it. One thing I wanted to stress really quickly is that Matthew is a security researcher, and one of the goals of this project was to try to develop protections against these types of attacks. He's working with auto manufacturers to create countermeasures against CAN bus attacks on vehicles. He's not just a hacker trying to make tools for thieves, just want to lay it out there. So I guess the question is, how can you guard yourself from this kind of attack? Now, there are certain make and model vehicles that are even more susceptible to this kind of attack. So doing a little bit of research before purchasing a vehicle is definitely suggested. But honestly, beyond that, and maybe keeping your vehicle in a locked garage, there's not a ton you can really do. If somebody can physically access your vehicle and then get into the CAN system with a computer of some sort, you're kind of out of luck. So I guess what I'm trying to do is spread as much awareness about it so at least you know what you're up against. Look, hackers gonna hack, and it really doesn't matter what the system is, eventually they're gonna get through it. It's just an endless cat and mouse game, and from what we've seen, hackers always seem to win. Thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun watching Matthew's video that I decided to try to make a little bit of a boiled down version for you guys. Definitely, if you find this even remotely interesting, watch the entire presentation. I promise you it's worth it. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.